And our next item for you is a bit of a wild card. This is a soundtrack to a YouTube video I'll send a link to. It's entitled The Problem with Diversity in Books. It's a rant by an author called Brie Fashow. I've got to be honest, I haven't heard of her before, but I certainly sympathise with what she says. And as with all our items here on Radio Free UK, you can click through to see the original item. And in this case, it'll lead you through to Brave for Show's YouTube channel, where you can hear more from her and get links to our other online presences. So do have a listen and enjoy. Hey guys, Brie Fauché here, and today is the day that I probably lose half my subscribers. I make controversial videos from time to time, as you guys know. I was nervous when I posted my Star Wars video. I was nervous when I posted my Unpopular Opinions video. I've never been so nervous as when I'm posting this video, but it's gotten to the point where I have seen this trend going on so much on YouTube, so much on BookTube, and so much against authors in general. I have to say something, because this is some of the most ugly, atrocious behavior I have ever seen. And I realize I might get some hate for this video, but I have to say something, because I've had enough. It has got to stop now. This particular issue has gone completely mainstream, and I'm seeing YouTubers, booktubers, and authors in particular get attacked on this issue. It comes down to this one particular word that has been used as a weapon of the absolute worst kind. I hate this word. It's one of the worst words in the entire human existence and the entire English language. I hate it. And that word is diversity. I'm going to give you a few examples to start with and then I'm going to explain where I'm coming from so you can understand. I hate this current groupthink mentality that tells people that diversity is the most beautiful thing in the world and it's the only acceptable way to be. You may hear that and think, wow, that's really radical, Brie. Let me explain. There are different types of diversity. We have diversity of race, diversity of ethnicity, diversity of sexuality, diversity of morals, and diversity of viewpoint. Those are the main diverse realms that we're talking about here. Having a widespread diverseness of viewpoint is exactly why fiction and books exists to begin with. Diversification of viewpoint is a very good thing. Generally, the protagonist has one viewpoint and the antagonist has another. The protagonist has the correct viewpoint and the antagonist generally thinks that their viewpoint is what's morally right, but we know deep down that it's not. So this creates a conflict, and therefore we have a story. So I'm going to cut down right to the chase, now that we know the different types of diversity that there is in existence in the world. Recently, when I went onto Google, I did a little search of YA books with all white characters. Here are some of the headings that I saw. That alone makes me irritated, but it came to a head Sunday night when I was lying in bed looking through my favorite fantasy authors list on Twitter and I came across a little feud that was happening on Victoria Schwab's Twitter feed. A particular troll online, and I went through this person's feed, I do consider them to be a troll of the worst kind, was pointing the finger at Victoria Schwab for having nothing but white characters and her book Vicious. Victoria Schwab instantly had to go on the defense because she was accused of primarily one thing, having all white characters in her novel.
You're a brilliant writer. Vicious was one of my favorite books of 2014, and I will gladly defend you on this issue because I don't like what they did to you. And I don't care if your book had a primarily white cast of characters. I don't. Because it was entertaining as hell. It had a good theme. It was well written. The theme around the book Vicious of moral ambiguity and superpowers and the willingness of a character to believe that they're doing the right even though they're doing the wrong was completely forgotten because someone brought up the fact that there wasn't anyone of color in her book. But let's just say the truth right now. If Victoria Schwab had featured nothing but a cast of people of color in her story or had three or four or five characters of color in her story, we all know what the response would have been. Tell me how much you know about being black. And let's be honest here. This person on Twitter was calling Victoria Schwab basically a racist by mere association of the fact that she wrote what she knew and featured a cast primarily of white characters. Regardless of the fact that it was an excellent book with very good themes. Which makes me often think, what's next? Are we going to ban books of historical value because they have the N-word? Because of the association that that might make the author a racist because they use the N-word in a historical context that was useful for the time period of a historical novel? I recently came upon a tweet from a booktuber. I'm not going to say this person's name. But this individual pinned a tweet at the top of their Twitter feed from one of their videos that displayed a comment from one of their subscribers asking this person a simple question. The comment read, I like your videos and respect your opinion, but why do we have to have diversity in a book? I don't consider a book bad or to have faults because it doesn't have an LGBTQ or non-white character. To me, the history and the way it's written is the most important thing. To which this booktuber responded, we had to have diversity in books because our world is diverse. So not including diverse characters means that at its foundation, it is not written well or it doesn't have an accurate history. This booktuber pinned this comment as a tweet to the top of their Twitter feed, reading above it, PSA, stop, stop doing this. There is no excuse. As a booktuber and as somebody who has a public image or maybe a tiny microscopic bit online to uphold, I just want to say this. Do not ever, ever shame one of your subscribers publicly on your Twitter feed, on your YouTube channel, ever. I don't care if they have a different viewpoint than you. Do not ever do that. When you do this, you are attempting to silence free speech by use of public humiliation. And this booktuber lost my viewership permanently because of it. By the way, if we're gonna talk accurate history, there are very few cultures throughout history that have encouraged diversity. It's a very, very modern concept. We could literally sit here all day long and talk about how race, ethnicity, values, and moral virtue have never ever been a point of people wanting to assimilate with one another. It's never, diversity has never been a prized virtue within history. Take a look at some examples, which we could get into for days. Muslim aggression against Europeans. The clash of classes in the French Revolution. The burning of suspected witches and heretics. The aggression between colonials and Native Americans. Israel versus Palestine. The Holocaust. The Islamic slave trade, which, by the way, was ten times worse than the American slave trade. But no one ever asked for reparations from the Muslims. Catholics versus Protestants. Nazis burning books. Every single culture in existence has resisted diversity by means of killing each other, segregating against one another, and saying that it was immoral to even be around one another. And they have always done things, including killing one another, to prevent diversity from happening. We naturally, as a human race, are very tribal. We tend to desire wanting to be around our own race or around our own ethnicity. And taking comfort in one's own ethnic group or race is not racist. There have been laws throughout the ages that have been designed to keep diversity and people separated. Almost every single culture throughout the centuries have done it. Everyone's guilty of it. So to say, that to write well means to add diversity in and of itself is historically inaccurate. This booktuber basically called her viewership
dumb. Like her viewership is so dumb and so impressionable that she needs to publicly shame them for reading an author who doesn't condense themselves into what her viewpoint is of something that's socially acceptable. I don't give a rat's ass about diversity of race, diversity of ethnicity, and diversity of morals or values. I don't give a flying fuck. Diversity of race, ethnicity, and values in particular is complete bullshit and it is designed to degrade and segregate us. All it does is completely destroy the idea of having diverse viewpoints. And directly pointing out that an author only has a book of a white cast of characters is designed to attack them. It's only ever called upon to destroy one person's particular viewpoint. It basically means shut up everybody who doesn't share the same perspective as I have. It serves no other purpose. And you had said this, Dr. Martin Luther King is not a black hero. He is an American, American hero. hero. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, I, I think uh, if you, uh, you sort of categorize uh, people, it tends to dilute their importance. Mm -hmm. Black History Month you find ridiculous. Why? You're going to relegate my history to a month? Oh, come well, on. What do you do with yours? What, which month is White History Month? No, well, no, 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 come on, tell me. Well, the, I'm Jewish. Okay, which I'm month Jewish. is Jewish History Month? No, uh, there isn't one. Oh, oh, why not? Yeah. Do you want one? No, no, no. I, 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 I don't either. You might as well just get down to bare bones and say what you really, really mean when you call out an author for having an all-white cast of characters. We need fewer white people. Martin Luther King himself said that we need to judge someone by their character and not their skin color. It's almost become a cliche to mention it, but I feel like this message has been completely lost. And the pressure that authors are experiencing these days to include diverse people in their books, whether it be diverse race, ethnicity, or sexual orientation, is designed to point them out in a way as being morally inferior. And it helps to negate themes that otherwise would be recognized in a book as being really morally profound. Can my characters not teach my readers a beautiful lesson because maybe I have a cast of characters that's mostly white? Does that completely negate the theme of my story simply because maybe I have a cast of characters that are white? For example, one of my favorite books a few years ago was The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. It explores the wonderful themes of living with terminal illness, death, particularly at such a young age, learning how to cope with it, the grieving process, and it's a beautiful exploration of children with cancer and was one of the most profound books that I've ever read. Is it a lesser story and a lesser theme because most of the characters in that story happen to have a pigmentation of their skin that was white? Should we call John Green a racist and point out the fact that he's morally flawed because he didn't check his white privilege? Does John Green need to really examine the inner deep biases he may have because the story was mostly white people? Is it a less entertaining or fantastic novel because there weren't more people of color? Or maybe he didn't throw in a gay character in there? People who use the word diversity or call for more diversity in books are really trying to proclaim this sense of undeserved moral superiority. Whilst, you know, not actually attempting to write a novel themselves and maybe make the world that they're creating more diverse. They actually consider themselves to be better people because they're identifying books that primarily have a white cast or that have only heterosexual characters. Could you please do your best to try to explain to me how that isn't racist against white people? Because I don't get it. I've seen lots of tweets lately with people pointing out that a lot of book covers don't have a more diverse cross-section of characters. I've even seen tweets on Twitter lately that are calling out for more diverse authors out there that seem to think that the publishing industry is being biased by having mostly white authors in existence. These people have no freaking clue how the publishing industry works. A literary agent doesn't give a crap 
what your skin color is. The way it works is you write your novel, you write a query letter to an agent, they will read the query letter and the query letter alone and decide whether they would think the book is worth even reading. Then you send them the book, they decide whether they like it, they might have a phone call with you, and then they'll give you some edits for it, you'll fix it in whatever way they see appropriate. They'll decide whether or not the book can actually make money and sell, whether or not it's a good story, and then try to sell it to publishers. I've never in my life heard of an agent that asked someone after they sent a query letter what their race was. And if anybody asked me what my race was upon submitting a query letter, I would be offended. Let me just say this loud and clear because, you know, maybe some people in the back didn't hear me. I don't give a fuck what your skin color is. I don't care what your sexuality is. I don't care what your religion is. I don't care about my characters having a certain pigmentation to their skin, having a particular religion, having a particular ethnicity, or having a particular sexuality. That is completely irrelevant to me and does not serve the purpose of the story. And trying to bring that up intentionally divides people. And then these individuals try to claim that they have the moral high ground. You do not have the moral high ground. All you're doing is virtue signaling. You're trying to tell everybody that you're so superior because you're taking time to think about whether or not there's a minority in a particular story. I don't care if you're black, gay, Jewish, green, purple, blue. I don't care if you look like Mystique. I don't care. I care about what's in here. What are your virtues? What do you contribute to this world? What do my characters contribute to this world? I care about the journey of my characters and the small insights that they can give to the world through their voice. To get all technical and scientific on you, studies have shown for years that what makes a community thrive is not race, ethnicity, or sexuality of any kind, or a diversification of all those things. Those that thrive and have a healthy community have one single thing in common. They share common core values. They have like-minded morals. When you throw a lot of people together with opposing values, you get a recipe for disaster. History is proof of this. The idea that we need to talk more about race and ethnic groups is becoming more and more invalid and irrelevant each and every day. The birth rate among the white race is massively on the decline. My grandfather used to say that we need those minority laws because whites will one day be the minority. We have many cultures throughout the world that not only believe that the birth control is wrong, but also that it's perfectly okay to have multiple wives. Osama bin Laden had 20 children among five wives. We whiteies can't really compete with that sort of thing while also trying to keep alive the idea of the nuclear family for the purpose of raising children in a good and strong household. I also had a little personal encounter with this booktuber when they brought up a book they wanted to read. I had heard a few controversial viewpoints about this book and was surprised that this booktuber would want to read it. I initially liked this booktuber because they had the balls to talk about a very popular book having a very abusive relationship and how that's not a healthy trend that we're seeing in YA these days, or in any fiction really, or a girl falls in love with a guy who's essentially an emotional abuser. So I was surprised when this booktuber wanted to read a book that had those same themes. This booktuber told me that they wanted to read the book precisely for that reason, that it was mostly straight white people that told them that it was a bad book and the LGBTQ community loves it and that's the opinion that they trusted. First of all, you don't know my sexuality just by looking at me or just by a comment that I post. Second, how is my opinion on abusive relationships less valid because I'm a white woman? Don't quite understand that. You can't condemn abusive relationships in one book and then say they're okay in another book simply because it's a book about the LGBT community and it has a gay couple featured in it. That doesn't make it right or wrong. That completely makes your argument of being against that trope in books irrelevant. I was silenced, presumably, upon looking at my picture on the little features tab of the comment section because I was assumed to be straight and because I was white. Therefore, my opinion was not as valid as someone who was heterosexual. How is that not prejudice? How? 
Sometimes when I go onto Twitter, I see posts featuring pictures of books in bookstores with a little label on it that says how to better diversify your bookshelf. And it'll feature books with people of color on the cover, white people on the cover, people of various religions on the cover, and so on and so forth. Basically a way of virtue signaling to everybody about how superior you are because you have a bookshelf full of people of various ethnicities. Quit shoving your unearned superiority complex down my throat. And in my mind, you're completely anti-intellectual. This doesn't judge authors by the content or themes that they are creating throughout their book. It does nothing but belittle authors on their willingness to obey a certain groupthink mentality simply because they don't deign to put fewer white people in their stories or fewer straight people in their stories. Might I also point out that the uh, LGBT community only accounts for 4% of the population in the United States. All you're doing is guilt tripping the majority into catering to a minority and then having the balls to call it progressive. Overall, diversity of race and ethnicity is meaningless. Diversity of values is actively dangerous. Diversity of viewpoint, that's something we need to treasure till the day we die and fight for it at all costs. Yet most people who talk about diversity are the first to try to silence other viewpoints because someone has the balls to have an opinion that doesn't socially fit into the constructs of what they believe to be morally superior or they use some complete virtue signaling phrase like, there is no excuse. The trend of using the word diversity comes down to this one simple truth. You want fewer white people. You want fewer white people represented in stories. If you're so concerned about the representation of minorities in books, write your own damn book. As a self-published author, I'll tell you, it's not an easy thing to accomplish and to belittle my accomplishments, because maybe some of my books have a cast of primarily, primarily white characters. To me, that's about as anti-intellectual as you can possibly get. It completely nullifies anything else I was trying to achieve in the story. It intentionally segregates and intentionally divides people and intentionally tries to start conflict. If you're really concerned about minority groups, go volunteer at a group youth center or go make friends in a community with an ethnic group that's completely different to your own. Go hang out with them. Do that. Be active in your community and get to know people of a different class system or of a different ethnicity or of a different race. Trying to call out authors for not fitting into this little social construct that you consider to be superior? Who the hell are you? And the oh so eloquent words of this booktuber who saw fit to silence others and myself for holding that different viewpoint. And to anyone else that seeks to harass authors for the sake of the word diversity, there is no excuse.